Nancy meteorologist Tim Root with your KLEK 102.5 forecast. Clouds and rain showers today, a high temperature in the mid-50s, a north wind 10 to 15. A chance of rain showers overnight, mostly cloudy, 40 to 45. Partly to mostly sunny Friday, there might be a few showers, the high around 60. Saturday, partly to mostly sunny, 60 to 65. Partly sunny with a few showers in the low 60s planned for Sunday. Jonesboro, that's your KLEK 102.5 FM weather. From Feature Story News in London, I'm Ollie Barrett. Pollution levels in India's capital have crossed the permissible limit and authorities have announced a 10-day long emergency action plan. Divers have found one of the black boxes from the Lion Air flight that crashed off Indonesia. US President Trump says he doesn't feel betrayed by Saudi Arabia over the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. And serious and organised crime is the biggest threat to UK citizens, according to a new report and costing the country $48 billion a year. It's 9.01. KLEK LP Jonesboro, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. It's now time for Community Conversations, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. Good morning, everyone, and happy wet Thursday to you. I hope that you're having a great start to your day. You're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I'm your host, Kabila Jones, and my special guest today is Ms. or Mrs. 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 Shelby Knight. She is the executive director of the Center for Exceptional Families. Thank you for joining us this morning. Well, thank you for having me. I'm tickled to be here. Thank you. And I ran across this organization by way of there was an event you were hosting a while. Oh, it was an event to um, get families to get. It was a family and community engagement event. Yes. And so, unfortunately, I didn't get you on to talk about that mm-hmm. beforehand. Mm-hmm. But we're going to definitely get into some more details about. What services the center offers to families? But before we do that, I'll, since this is your first time here, can you please give us a brief introduction of yourself and what role you play? I know you're executive director, but you do so much more than that. Oh my goodness! Well, it, I, I wear all kinds of hats at the center. <laughs> I, I do, uh, but first and foremost, I'm the parent. I'm a parent of a uh, special needs person. My son is uh, 29; just turned 29 a couple of weeks ago. His name is Jeremiah, okay. and I have been in advocacy since he was born really but um, I I didn't come into professional advocacy until 2001 and I've been working at the parent center the parent training center since that time Um, living with Jeremiah certainly has been a trip (laughs) it's been a trip but um, but it's a wonderful experience and so uh, and there's and there's been issues with it too I mean there's I've made lots of mistakes so I tell my parents today if if you learn anything from me at all please learn what not to do because I've got lots of experience with what not to do so uh, at that's the connection that I can make with families today. But I am the parent of a child with a disability, and, and I have two other children and three grandchildren. I'm married. I live here in Jonesboro. I've been married for 35 years, and, and we've lived in Jonesboro for uh, about 40. Well, I've been lived in Jonesboro almost all my life. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. Now, I'm happy to hear that you know you've taken your life experience and turned it into, I hate to say, career, but you're mm-hmm. helping other families that are coping with the same. Right. Or similar issues, Mm -hmm. um, helping them get over some of those hurdles that they face Mm -hmm. uh, with children or family that have these special needs. So let's get into the services, the basis of the services that the center offers, and also talk about the various locations. Mm -hmm. Well, our services are very unique, really. We are a federal grant program. So our funds are received from the Office of Special Ed Programs in Washington, D.C. Okay. We write for these funds every five years. It is a five-year grant cycle. Okay. Now, in doing so, we, we make a list of things that we promise to provide. Okay. We, we let, uh, when we write this grant, we say that we're going to do X amount of workshops, X amount of, of exhibits. We're going to make stakeholder meetings. And, and then the emphasis is on uh, parent engagement, number okay. one, parent involvement in our process, but then the results driven. Our, our work is results driven. Okay. So I know that sometimes it's hard for parents when they call in to our toll-free number and and they get me because I don't have a secretary to get the phone. So um, so they get me and, and, uh, but when they call in, 
it's very important that I get their their data. I need to get their name, I need to get their ethnicity, I need to get their, their the age of their child, the disability of their child, their email address, all of those things because that is results driven. Okay. That is information driven and we need that information when parents call in. Okay. But uh, but I, I love the idea of, of parents calling us and and they'll pour out their hearts. Okay. They'll they may have received a new diagnosis, they don't know what to do with that. And they're they'll pour out their heart to me and and want to be um, loved on a little bit okay let's just say it like that they, they need to get that out they need yeah. to get that out and then once they get that out to me if they live in northeast Arkansas in the 15 counties that I cover okay. then I can help them but once they let me know where they live then I'm, I'm quickly looking up which one of our advocates across the state can okay. help that family now we have a staff of, across the state. Like I said, we have uh, someone in Mountain View, Arkansas. Okay. Her name is Lorena, and she covers that area of the state. Lorena is the mother of a special needs uh, student as well. Okay. And then we move over to the Fort Smith area. We have Tracy Risley. Mm -hmm. Tracy works in Fort Smith, and and she does. She's a retired special ed school teacher. Oh. So she's okay. perfect for that position yes, perfect and then in hot springs area we have Teresa Dodson Teresa is also the mother of a young boy with autism and so and then we move over to Lakeisha Whitman Lakeisha is in the south east corner of the state and I, I tease Lakeisha I say she's got 15 children because oh. uh, I can never remember the number of kids that she does have okay. but she's got quite a few okay but uh, uh, Lakeisha does a fabulous job she's our associate director Okay. And, uh, and she lives in the Whitehall area, so she has an office in Whitehall okay. and works with families in that region of the state. I handle Northeast Arkansas, okay. and we have an office assistant here with us named Abby. And then we have uh, our newest hire is Denise Ennett, and Denise handles Central Arkansas. Okay. The five counties just laterally there across Central Arkansas, okay. she does that. We also have a Hispanic coordinator who works with our Hispanic families, and her name is Cynthia Castro, and she's statewide. That is wonderful. So you really cover Arkansas and trying yes. to reach these families. So let's talk about some of the disabilities or the disabilities um, or the special needs, I should say, mm -hmm. and help me with the language. I don't want to okay. be Okay, you're fine. Disabilities <laughs> um, is fine. Disabilities are special needs that the children or um, individuals have that you assist with. All of them. All of them. Okay. All of them. So yes. anything from learning to physical. That's or right. Learning disabilities, a uh, simple uh, uh, math disability. Okay. I mean, whatever it is, we start at the, at the very the most basic, and we go all the way through. Okay. Well, how can someone get? Um, okay. Referrals, I guess you say. Do you mm -hmm. take referrals, self referral, um, mm -hmm. PCP referral? How does it work for someone to get become a client or patient of your facility? Oh, girl, we just we just have a toll free number and we have a web page. Okay. And we have a Facebook page, and, and if people have issues, they can contact us in any of those forms. Okay. And then we do have parents that will message our uh, website. Okay. And we handle those very quickly. Those are sent right on to the person that works their area of the state. We have a toll-free number, and like I said, I answer that, that phone. So okay. uh, we can, I, I'll take their information and, and give them the phone number of the advocate who works their area of the state. Okay. Now, and they can find this information on our uh, website, okay. which yeah. is which is www.tcfef, that's the Center for Exceptional Families, org. And then there's a list in there under uh, staff. Then they can see which parent mentor works in their area of the state, and they can call them directly. Their numbers and email addresses are listed there on our website. Oops, sorry. Did that wrong. Okay, www.tcfef. That's where I went wrong. Put it. Yep. <laughs> dot org. Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> so if anyone would like to look up their information um, concerning this organization, if you have a child or you know someone who has a child or even adult, what is the age range of individuals that well, you serve? And that's very interesting. <laughs> and and <laughs> the the age range. We just don't have one. Okay. We just simply don't have one. Okay. Now, and I have to say that carefully because our our, our federal grant covers those persons um, 
under that are protected under IDEA, which okay. is the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. Okay. So our grant covers those persons, but our organization is also designed to help those who are post graduation. Okay. Because in, in, in the world that we live in today, in the state of Arkansas, there really are no post graduation activities for persons with disabilities. Yeah. You graduate high school and you either go to the day program or you go home with your mama. And lots of folks leave work in order to take care of their adults with disabilities. So while we can't change that, I don't have a day program. The Center okay. for Exceptional Families isn't a day program. We do uh, work with those families to find the best services possible for their children after they leave high school. We help, I mean, we, we work with individuals who have disabilities. Okay. We work with individuals to, to help them uh, have the best life possible, even after high school. Okay, that's awesome. So I want to talk about some of the programs that you host. I was looking through your Facebook page, and you all host quite a bit of programs or events that mm -hmm. focus on engagement with the community, mm -hmm. the parent, and the individual. Um, I see one is coming up in Whitehall. Um, it talks about, you know, it's a workshop. It's going to talk more about the agency. Effective advocacy, that one was really caught mm -hmm. my eye. There are many times that people want to help, but they may not know how mm -hmm. to help or intervene or how to advocate properly, right. <laughs> um, efficiently right. for the individuals. And um, also on the list is transition, independent living skills, and special needs trust planning. So mm -hmm. will you ever have one of these, or do you have one of these events um, scheduled for the Jonesboro or this Northeast Arkansas area? We have... We, we don't have it currently, okay. but we will have. This is Lakeisha's setup for Whitehall, and it's fabulous. Okay. Um, and we cover all of those topics, absolutely all of those topics. If we have a, uh, I, we need to set something up for Northeast Arkansas, actually. We did a workshop series in May that talked about special needs trust, okay. financial planning for a person with a disability. We had a series in, in May, and it was well attended. We were so happy okay. with that. And, um, and we would, I'd love to do it again. I really okay. would. But all of these are available. And uh, and yes, I, I you're, you're telling me now I need to get busy and get some stuff going to Northeast Arkansas. So I okay, fine. <laughs> well, I'll I take just, that. I know some families personally mm -hmm. that have children um, with needs that don't get, that doesn't always get met through their school system right. or through some other agencies, and they just have quite a few frustrations, and mm -hmm. they need a space um, where their child can feel included mm -hmm. <laughs> to say the least um i'm trying to pick and choose my words without offending anyone um but i just know some people personally that could really use the services mm -hmm. that you mm -hmm. offer um so i would love to see something we would definitely help promote a community event yes yes <laughs> oh that'd be wonderful you know it's 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 difficult um even though our financial workshop was well attended um some of the others may not be okay simply because it's hard for parents to pull away and attend something like that mm -hmm. so we would love to be able to move into the Facebook live uh, do these things oh. when, when when it's convenient for families all of our presentations every workshop that we provide is on our our website okay. and you can click on that and you can get them with audio you can get them without audio and they can uh, uh, conduct a, a workshop in their in their kitchen if they want to okay. or sitting on their couch everything that we have available everything that Lakeisha is presenting on is available on our website and parents can log on to that and look at what's what they what they need what they specifically want to target whether it's building up their uh, advocacy skills under effective advocacy okay. or it's learning about IDEA or section 504 it's all on our website all right well thank you I want to say good morning to Ms. Sheila Higgins and Michelle Kirkwood thank you for checking in please share this video and share this information with anyone that you know you're tuned in to community conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM we're speaking with Mrs. Shelby Knight from the Center for Exceptional Families all right so I want to uh, highlight some other events um, that you all have been hosting mm -hmm. and again all of these events um, are centered around the families of, that have children or individuals in their home in their life <laughs> with special needs mm -hmm. or disabilities um, you hosted a mom's night out um, 
I don't see where exactly this was. No, that's actually not something that we host. That's okay. something that's hosted uh, oh, by another, another organization, and we shared that. Okay, I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. That's all right. <laughs> that's all right. Lord. Now, um, there was something I saw about sensory. Um, Oh, Sensory Saturday. Yes. Oh, my. Um, I love Sensory Saturday. I just love it. It's such a unique event. Now, most states across the country have lots of of, uh, sensory activities that they have for children with disabilities. Um, There'll be, we can do a sensory jump night. At, at like the trampoline parks and those kinds of things and 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 everybody's got a sensory thing of their own but um, I love that we have sensory Saturday for our families it's well attended it runs itself now and uh, and it's such a it's such a wonderful thing to be able to provide for families because you know you when you think about the typical movie experience you you go into the theater and and if I'm just going in with my family or my husband you just really need to pay attention when you walk into the theater because there are strobing lights around this, the movie selection. The gaming machines are on. The little the little picker, the toy picker yes. things are going. Uh, the Dippin' Dots machine is running. The lights are flickering. It's really it's noisy. Oh, it's really <laughs> noisy when you go into that theater, not to mention the theater is full of patrons. Mm-hmm. So when we created Sensory Saturday, and, and some we didn't we didn't invent the idea, of course, we just latched onto it because other states were seeing success with that. So when we began Sensory Saturday, it's uh, five and a half years ago. It was just such a way to to bring in the families whose children can't attend a typical movie experience. Some of these families had had never even been to the movies before we conducted Sensory Saturday. So in the beginning. It was uh, it was me and uh, and the families coming in and and I had to be there with them and uh, uh, welcome them in and get them seated and, and help them with their get their kids in place because it was a new experience. Now I don't even have to show up. Oh, wow. I mean it just runs itself. We just advertise that our movie is coming up and people see it on our Facebook page and on our website and they just show up and it's wonderful. We had 400 folks there when Dory came out. 400 folks. Our, our attendance ranges from about uh, uh, 80 or so to 120 okay. usually. If we hit 150, that's a good movie. Okay. You know, we'll take that one. But um, we work with a local theater here in Jonesboro and uh, the manager there is really good to give us um, more theaters than than just the one okay. if it begins to fill up then he'll open up another theater right there next to it and and uh, and and our folks can go and sit in there if they got a child that that's that's really struggling with the whole experience okay. and he opens up a theater and lets that family go in there and watch that movie that so but you know when you think about it the the sensory issues that we have now I'm just going to use my son for an example because he is not listening to this to this broadcast right now okay. he's he, I know that he's not but um, when Jeremiah goes to a typical movie with me and his dad, he will go in with his big headphones on okay. and he'll have his fingers stuck in his ears even under his headphones. He'll be nervous about it. He'll breathe a little bit heavy um, and he'll be a little bit, he, he'll kind of, he's, he's nervous about having to go into this theater with us because he knows it's going to be loud. On the days of Sensory Saturday, he gets out of my car, he, he does not wear his headphones, and he carries in my box of t-shirts that I have for sale that say okay. Sensory Saturday. He carries that in for me. And there, he doesn't have a single issue. He's not nervous about it at all because he knows that that lobby is going to be quiet. That's awesome. He knows that the machines are turned off. The marquee lights around the, around the listing of the movies is turned off. It's not flashing. It's not strobing. There's nothing in that theater lobby to upset him, and he knows that. So he helps me carry my stuff in and set my booth up. Okay. It's wonderful. Now the Malco has full concession for Sensory Saturday. Okay. They have, and the ticket price is. Uh, let's see if I if I gotta get well, it right. We're not commercial, so we can. Oh, okay. Got gotcha, you. Got gotcha. you. Sorry. 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 I could I could go on and on. I'm proud but of that if, Sensory Saturday. But if anyone would love more information about the Sensory Saturday and the prices, please reach out to Mrs. Shelby. Mm-hmm. Um, Apologize, we're non-commercial, so we will. We don't want to get in trouble with FCC, <laughs> uh, but we definitely want people to participate. This is a wonderful um, idea and event because we want to make sure that all residents of our communities are included and feel that's right, accepted and included. That's right in every aspect of what the community has to mm-hmm. offer. Um, individuals with disabilities should not have to lack in 
enjoying their life to the That's fullest right. because um, things are not venues are not accessible to them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right. Our next movie's coming up really quick. So they can follow us on Facebook. I, I won't announce the date because I don't want to get you in trouble. Uh, okay. Well, the dates you can announce. Okay. There's perfect. no prices. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes. Well, they. Yes. The Malco. The Malco charges a fee. We don't charge a fee. Okay. But the Malco charges a fee, of course, for admission. But our next movie is The Grinch, and oh, wow. uh, and it's the new Grinch movie, the new one. Let's see. Uh, it's a. It's a animated. So and that's going to show November the tenth, at nine thirty in the morning. Now, does the movie theater, and we'll move on to another event, but I have one more question. Does the movie theater have a way to filter the the picture of the, in case the animation of the movie has too many moving parts? No. Too, okay. No. We, they don't do that. They just show the movie, but they do show it at a lower volume. Okay. They do that. And we do leave the lights up a little bit so the kids can see their folks, and it's not completely dark. You know how dark it gets in the theater yes, really ma'am. quickly. Um, we leave the lights up just a little bit so that they can see their mom and dad and see their snacks and that sort of thing. Okay. We do. Now, and, and also, let me just say, I, I could go all day on this one, but, <laughs> but children are not required at Sensory Saturday to sit in that seat. If they've got to oh. stand up, if they've got to bring their blanket, if they've got to, got to bring their security toy, from the house that's fine we have kids that that don't sit still during the entire movie i mean they've got to sit way down front and they got to be walking back and forth and we're cool with that we we don't mind at all we just we want them there we want them there to have that experience all right well with that we're going to get ready to take a quick break and when we come back we'll talk about another event that's coming up actually in jonesboro um this one november it's already november um art with a heart art with heart and some other things that are going on you tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM, and we'll be right back after these announcements. Listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. Do you believe you have much influence on your child's future career choice? I'm Mark Merrill with today's Family Minute. Many studies have shown that parents do have a big impact on what their kids decide to do for a living. Here are three ways to influence your child's career choice. First, be a student of your child. Watch your kids carefully and take mental notes on their natural skills, interests, and areas of giftedness. Second, validate your child's gifts. When you see those interests and gifts emerging, it's important to verbally affirm your child. Third, encourage and guide your child in the development of those gifts. For more on influencing your child's career choice, visit my blog at markmerrill.com. Remember, your family first. The Family Minute with Mark Merrill, helping families love well. Family Minute is made possible by the Kappa Nu Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization committed to service to all mankind. Kappa Nu Omega Alpha Kappa Alpha on Facebook and K-N-O-M-E-G-A 1908.com. Com. Family Minute is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook, Gears underscore Inc. on Instagram, and the Gears Foundation at gmail.com. Cruise with KLEK September 5th through the 9th, 2019. Enjoy a four day getaway from New Orleans across the Caribbean in Cozumel, Mexico, with your fellow KLEK supporters. Partake of Sandy White Beaches, diving, fishing, swimming. Scoop diving, exotic marine life, dancing, dining, live entertainment, and play. The KLEK Cruise September 5th through the 9th is your summer 2019 vacation getaway. The cruise will leave New Orleans, Louisiana on September the 5th, 2019 at 4 p.m. and return to New Orleans on September the 9th. There will be several activities planned for the cruise, which more details will be released soon. But you can't wait to the last minute. You must act now. Just a $25 deposit will reserve your spot on the cruise. For more information or to reserve your spot, call KLEK at 870-203-9951. 
or visit our website at www.klekfm.org. This event is a KLEK fundraiser. Support for KLEK is brought to you by the Glen Sane Story. A few years ago, a good customer of ours retired from farming. And I asked him one day, I said, Frank, do you enjoy your retirement? He said, I really do, Danny. He said, you know, when I farmed, I'd go into a business in a hurry, and people come up and want to talk to me that retired and take a lot of time. Now, if I was in a hurry, he said, now I know it's a lot of people walking away from me. A good story. Glenn Sane, and God bless our troops. KLEK thanks C.J. Pepper and the staff of Life Strategies Counseling Incorporated for helping people through hard times in life such as depression, family issues, stress, abuse, and more. They offer counseling and therapy for all ages, individuals, families, and groups. They are located at 1217 Stone Street, phone number 1-866-972-1268 or online at lscihelp.com. The Office of Diversity and Community Engagement at Arkansas State University, under the leadership of Dr. Maurice Gibson, is a proud supporter of KLEK and is dedicated to finding innovative ways to advance their mission of creating a diverse and inclusive environment, conducive to educating, enhancing, and enriching lives, uplifting various and diverse groups on the A-State campus and striving to maintain Arkansas State University, a place that is inclusive to all individuals, regardless of origin, color, religion, socioeconomic status, or sexual orientation. More information about the Arkansas State University Office of Diversity and Community Engagement is available at www.astate.edu forward slash diversity and 870-972. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We're speaking with Mrs. Shelby Knight, the Executive Director of, well, for the Northeast Arkansas area, (laughs) for the Center for Exceptional Families. They have many... um, other facilities around the state of Arkansas. You can go to their website and find those uh, centers. If you know someone around the state that has a family member with a special need, and this can, and yeah, as Mrs. Shelby mentioned earlier, it can be any disability mm-hmm. or any right. special need. So there's no limitation. I want to say good morning to Mrs. Maddie Warren. Thank you for checking in. All right. So um, before we went to break, I mentioned that we were going to talk about. Art with Heart, which is an event that is coming up in Jonesboro on Saturday, November 17th. Mm -hmm. So tell us more a little bit about this event. Well, Art with Heart is very unique to Northeast Arkansas. And uh, uh, what we're showcasing here with this little event is uh, persons with disabilities who have artistic talent, who want to uh, show and sell their artwork. And it's a wonderful thing. We had it last year at the Miracle Field at Miracle League, and uh, we had five or six artists there who brought their work in and sold it. And it's it's affirming, number one, the affirmation of having someone like their work so much that they want to purchase it okay. is a wonderful thing for our adults with disabilities. And and uh, and so we encourage parents. We don't have a um, well, we have, we have the location that we're gonna do this. It's at the Casa Building, downtown Jonesboro, okay. on the 17th, and then uh, Uh, We would love to line up some artists, so if you have an artist in your family or you know of an artist that is really good who who wants to showcase and sell their work, then Mm -hmm. please get in contact with us and we can add them to our lineup. Okay, well, I'll definitely uh, post this information on the KLEK page, so hopefully there are some Mm -hmm. individuals who will buy it and submit some pieces. We have really talented artists in this area that have disabilities really talented one is licensed by a state to reproduce their work there Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is amazing yes and my son sells uh, makes and sells clay magnet art and he does it he ships nationwide i mean you know disability means nothing when you're talking about an artistic ability it means nothing so if we can provide a place for our folks to showcase that work gosh that's our and we want to do that 
that's amazing and we as a community need to get behind and support these individuals yes. because they are a part of our community a that's part right. of society so that's right please come we'll have refreshments first security bank is taking care of that for us and <laughs> and uh, and we're going to have refreshments we're going to have a green room set up so that our artists can go and kind of uh de-stress and, and kind of calm down if they need to and it's going to be fabulous we would love to see a good crowd of folks come out and support these folks with disabilities please jones but let's show these individuals what we're made of you know let's show them our love and support um let's get behind them and maybe purchase a piece you know mm-hmm. or maybe christmas is coming up that's right Why does it oh give? there's yes. always birthdays and anniversaries yes. and what <laughs> whatnot <Yes. laughs> so please go out and show your support for these individuals again this is november 17th on a saturday at 10 a.m and it's at 311 South Church Street, which is the Casa building. That's right, 311 okay. South Church, and we're gonna do it in the lobby of the Casa building. Okay, all right. So let's get into some more. Uh, we were talking a little bit off air about some of the advocacy work that you all do for families. Um, oh, I was telling you about someone that I know personally that has a child with you know, several issues. Mm-hmm. So what are some ways that you help parents navigate you know this journey because Mm -hmm. it can be very stressful um like you said once someone gets a diagnosis they're kind of like what now you know and your life their life changes and i'm sure you as a parent can Mm -hmm. tell us a lot of stories of how what it was like you know raising your child Mm -hmm. to where he is now and you had to overcome quite a few things but because of what you have gone through and you chose to stay the course, you are now helping other parents. So uh, tell us more about how you can advocate and, you know, maybe what are some boundaries, though? Because some people may expect you to do a whole lot more than what you're right. actually capable right. of. Right, right. Well, I, you know, again, based on life experience, based on what I went through with my son and my, my husband and I, we struggled with this diagnosis. We struggled with the early intervention process and then with public school systems. So, uh, and we're through all that now. Jeremiah's an adult and I can look back on that with pride and say, we totally screwed it up. So, so it's, oh. it's great to have, it's great to have that though. It's great because when parents call me now, I, like I said, I can give them a list of what not to do. This is what we're not going to do with okay. you. We've already been down that path. Let's do this correctly for you. Okay. And so we can do that. Now, I love for parents to call in and visit with me about their children. I, I, I'll sit and talk to them for as long as I need to talk about it. We'll figure out the plan. Now, the thing about uh, having a parent mentor like myself come in there, we are not adversaries. We're not going to upset the school system. We're not going to call and make waves and threaten to sue and stage a sit-in. <laughs> we don't do that kind of thing. Okay. All we do is we work with that family. We find out what the problem is. 99% of the time, Cordelia, it's a problem of communication. Mm-hmm. It's That's what it is. And somebody heard something incorrectly, and we can fix that. Now, when a parent calls in, they talk to me, they tell me all their issues, they ask me to get involved. Number one, I ask them to sign a parent waiver so that I can actually have a conversation with the school because I can't talk to the school unless it's okay with mom and dad. Okay. So they sign that waiver, and then I'll send a text message to the special ed supervisor or the 504 coordinator and say, hey, I got a parent, has got an issue with this little thing. You want to holler at me? Can we set up a meeting? And then we'll handle it like that. Now, we're advocates. We're not adversaries. We're not going to sue. We're not going to help you sue. We're not going to do that kind of thing. That's not our role. Our role is to build that bridge between the parent and the school and make that communication work. That's our role. All right. All right. And so I really hope that more parents, more families take advantage of the services that you have to offer. Because, again, like you mentioned, communication is key. That's right. I've known even people, and I really hate to use the word normal. Like, I'm trying to find another way to... Typical, Typical. <laughs> you know, typical people, we think we can communicate one level, you know, mm-hmm. by bi- binary, <laughs> um, communicate on one level. However, every individual is different mm-hmm. and we have to learn each other in order to communicate effectively. Now, when it comes to individuals with disabilities, um, we have to learn differently how to interact with that person. You can't interact with them as you would another a typical mm-hmm. individual so um, I want to see more I want to see us as individuals in this community learn how to engage with people on all levels mm-hmm. I'm trying to find the words to really because <laughs> I'm trying to steer away from some of those words that we right. use that right. are not always adequate 
quick to define right. a situation. That's right. <laughs> no. That's right. Um, I'm really trying to stay away from the word normal because That's everyone's right. normal is That's different. Right. That's exactly right. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, I because I have a issue, a physical issue. I have. Tr- I'm trying to become more of an advocate for people with physical disabilities. However, there are many other individuals with mental mm-hmm. um, and educational, mm-hmm. intellectual mm-hmm. disability. So I want to be an effective advocate. So maybe I need to connect with you to oh see my goodness, that'd be wonderful. <laughs> how I can also help other individuals within mm-hmm. the community. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you what you can do. We have a board of directors. Okay. I'll tell you that. We have a board of directors and, and those individuals are passionate about persons with disabilities and helping them achieve their ultimate life. So if you're passionate about that, then I, I welcome your input for our board of directors. Well, we, have we have seats available. All right. Well, we we'll definitely have to have the conversation after mm-hmm. this show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. Speaking of, you know, disabilities, we've talked a lot more about cognitive, you know, learning disabilities. What about individuals with physical disabilities? What types of programs or, um, I want to say programs, <laughs> what types of things that you do with them? to help them either transition into their new typical way of life, new normal way of life, or navigate the world, their mm-hmm. world. Right. Well, uh, the first thing that a person with a physical disability needs to learn about is Section 504 of the Rehab Act uh, that states that they have access to uh, education, access to life, and that's ADA, that's Americans with Disabilities Act. So a person with a, a, say for instance, a a person in a wheelchair, if you were to to go into Walmart and Walmart didn't have a curb cut for you, that's against the law, right? That's ADA, that's against the law. So a person with a physical disability needs to spend some time and energy learning about what ADA is for and how ADA protects them. A Section 504 plan within the school district is a, uh, a plan to ensure access to a quality education. Now access to, means curb cuts. Access means uh, if a young girl gets pregnant at 15 and can't access education because she's pregnant and everybody's looking at her, then she can school at home. She can school, you know, that's, it's giving access to. Uh, 504 isn't really about your intellectual ability. Okay. Um, that's what, that's what IDEA is for. Okay. Okay, so IDEA covers intellectual disability, 504 covers access to education. So folks with, uh, with physical disabilities have ADA to stand behind them in Section 504 of the Rehab Act, and that can help them have access to daily life and public education. That's wonderful. And I, um, I have a gentleman that comes on. He works for another um, a local mental health agency, and we've talked about a 504 plan and IDEA. But again, I feel like we can never have this conversation enough because there's so many people in the community who still may not know all the details about these different plans and what's really available to their students, their child um, that are struggling that is That's struggling right. in school. That's right. Every child should have adequate access and be supplied with the tools needed to be a successful student mm-hmm. to get them to that end goal of graduation you know that's what every parent wants and hopefully every child should want Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to reach that 12th grade year and graduate and move on to the next phase in their life Um, but it's up to us the adults that have the information uh, and tools Mm -hmm. to give it to them to help navigate these children through life and that's what we're here for (laughs) all right so you tuned in to community conversations on klek 102.5 fm um, I saw another event. I know it's, this is not your event, mm-hmm. but um, it seems like something you are a partner with. Um, it's Peter Pan, a trike theater production, relaxed performance. Now, this is not happening in Jonesboro, I don't think. No, that's Northwest Arkansas, okay. actually. So, um, is this something that your agency partners with? Um, it isn't, no, but that is put on by an agency that we are a sister to that's put on by, uh, that's a connection to Arkansas Support Network. Okay. And they're similar to a parent training center, but they cover uh, four counties in the northwest corner of the state. Okay. And I brought this up just to highlight that there are many other agencies, individuals that are geared to helping mm-hmm. um, individuals with these disabilities so that, again, they can enjoy all the that uh, the right. community and life has to offer. That's right. Um, individuals with disabilities should not have to not 
to like go to the movies, mm -hmm. go shopping, go to theater, go mm -hmm. to different places that they would like to go. That's right. Um, I'm seeing more um, play playgrounds and facilities built that cater to the needs That's right. um, of individuals. They have sensory surfaces, uh, mm -hmm. services that are that cater to the sensory mm -hmm. needs of uh, individuals. Things, um, equipment that is accessible for people in wheelchairs or with mm -hmm. other physical disabilities. So there's a lot more happening around the world, mm -hmm. but there's always more that can be done. Right. I think our society is at a place now where they're doing more for adults, children and adults with disabilities than they ever have in the past, but there's so much more work to be done. There's so much more. We just have to, to keep plowing our row and, and make this thing happen for all our families. That's right. That's we, our goal. We don't want to see anyone um, left behind and just pushed away to the side mm -hmm. in a corner of society and just kind of left to their own devices. They de Again, they deserve the full access to That's everything right. that we um, that are considered normal, typical, <laughs> have access to. They deserve a full life. That's right, <laughs> they do. All right, so um, are there any other engagement um, workshops or events, things that are coming up in Jonesboro that families need to be aware of, or not necessarily Jonesboro, but the Northeast Arkansas area? Well, no, and you're really calling me out on that one. <laughs> so I've, I've got to get busy. i got to get busy and get some things on my calendar, get some things planned. Yes, ma'am, I do. I would love to bring a Sensory Saturday to other theaters. Now, we're in Jonesboro now. We're talking to Batesville. We're trying to get it there for our families in Batesville. If you have connections to a theater across Northeast Arkansas and, and you would love to see Sensory Saturday come to your area, let hook me up, call me, and, and let me get in there and work for you to, to get this thing set up because we want to be everywhere for our families. Families. We really do. So uh, give me a call. And I want to encourage everyone, just reach out, period. Um, this is not the days of old when we just handled everything on our own at mm -hmm. home. I grew up in a time where, and I'm not that old, but <laughs> I grew up in a time where we didn't put our elderly in the nursing home. We, we just did everything at home. We didn't right. talk about what was going on. We kept everybody out of our business mm -hmm. type deal. It's okay to say you need help. <laughs> That's right. I mean, oh my yes. That's a sign of strength um, to say, I need help. I can't do this alone. There are families out there that need extra help. If you know someone, please encourage them to reach out to Ms. Shelby, Mrs. Shelby and her staff and other individuals around the state of Arkansas. They can help ease the, at least the emotional burden. That's right. Of, yes. Um, having to have these family members with these disabilities. Mm -hmm. um, it can be stressful. You can go home at night and you just cry yourself to sleep. I mean, I don't know what your journey was like and all the emotional things that you and your husband and your family went through, but I can just imagine, based on people that I know, mm -hmm. um, it's not easy. It's not easy. <laughs> no, ma'am, it's not easy. But it's doable. I mean, God's grace is, is sufficient. It is doable. Okay. You just have to hang in there and get it done. And please, um, if we can help with that, if you just want to call and talk about it, I'll talk to mama. I mean, mama to mama. <laughs> oh. I can talk mama to mama, and, and we can handle a whole lot of things. All right. And then, you know, also along with that, I'm sure you've had to adjust your discipline. Because, I mean, just because someone has a disability, a child has a disability, that doesn't mean they get free reign. Oh, no. Um, they have to still be reined in and disciplined, <coughs> but according to their need of what they're mm -hmm. capable of understanding. Mm -hmm. So, right. again, maybe you can help someone understand, okay, timeout doesn't work for my child, or death, you know, spanking, or, you know, um, they may like to read. I don't know. There's all types mm -hmm. of ways you can mm -hmm. discipline, but That's right. children with special needs, it, you just have to adjust it a little bit. <laughs> That's right. And you always have to look at, when it's a child with special needs, if they're acting out, look at what's look at that situation around them and see what it is that might be making them act out. Okay. It, it could be um, always a behavior, a shown behavior, has an antecedent. Okay. I mean, let's look at what happened just prior to the to the moment that he, okay. that he popped that teacher, just prior to that, just about three seconds back. Okay. See what happened. All right. And then parents, don't be afraid to talk to the teachers, like you mentioned. That's right. Um, teachers need to know what the triggers are for that child. Maybe they can try to adjust the situation in the classroom. Um, and Or maybe you can push enough for your child to be in a classroom with others like them. Mm -hmm. I know some parents don't want to make their child feel like they're singled out. They're really different, but 
there are times when you have to decide my child needs special attention, special mm-hmm. care, special mm-hmm. something. And right. They cannot sit in the classroom with other students who do not understand right. what is going on with them. Right. So be your child's advocate as well. <laughs> and so I'm sure those are some things that you cover with um, the parents that you deal with. And so tell us more. Tell us where you are located. Do you have an off? Where's your office located? Oh yes, I'm we didn't on Stone get into Street. that. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that. Uh, we're at 1702 Stone Street, Suite A, and that is uh, right off of Caraway Road. It uh, Stone Street runs parallel to Caraway and Red Wolf. Okay. And from my office window, I can see the back side of Simmons Bank Building. Okay. Okay, so you. Really I'm right, right around the corner. Right around the right corner. Around, you can come over and have lunch with me sometime. All yes, right. I'm right around the corner. <laughs> All right, so we're getting ready to wrap up this segment. So in the last two minutes, um, give us any final information, um, contact information, anything you would like individuals, families to know about how to reach you and what to expect. Um, Call that toll-free number. Call right. that toll-free number, and let's see. That toll-free number is 888-360-360. 9654. All right. So don't be afraid to get the help that you need. Um, everyone deserves, every child, every human, everybody deserves a chance to live the best life possible. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a great little, that's a great line. Thank you for that. That's our little tagline. I appreciate that. And they do. And let's make that happen. Yes. Let's just make that happen across our state. We can do that. All our services are provided for free. And, and we just want to help. We just want to help with this process with the school system. And we've been doing this for a very long time. So we're oh. capable of helping. There, There's no fee for our service. And, and let us get in there. All right. And one thing I always like to say is um, when I'm doing my advocacy work, um, educate yourself so that you can advocate for someone you love. Um, Be the voice for someone who doesn't have a voice, who feels they don't have a voice. Um, Everyone deserves, you know, to have access to everything the community has to offer. So please consider reaching out to Mrs. Shelby. I'm sure she'll be happy to talk with you. So, um, and we're going to have to cut our interview short today. So, but I thank you so very much yes. for joining me and sharing this information. I look forward to more events and hopefully definitely working closer with you. Absolutely. <laughs> I've loved it. Thank you for having me. This is the, this is a joy. I love to, to have a captive audience where I can talk about our program. I love it. Right, thank you. And as um, more community events pop up that you make in host a table, I would definitely let you know about that as well. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. You're tuning in to Community Conversation on Kelly 102.5 FM, and we'll be right back after these announcements. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. We're back with Money Matters. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. Today we're covering how to read your credit card statement. Let's talk finance charges and or interest. This is what you're paying for the privilege of borrowing money with your credit card. You do know that credit is not free money, don't you? The finance charge on your monthly credit card statement is the interest you pay on the unpaid balance of your account. The calculation method used to determine the finance charge has an effect on the amount you actually pay in finance charges. The most commonly used calculation method is the average daily balance. Three things you should know about your credit cards at all times. The interest rates you're paying, the balances you owe, and what percentage of your available credit is currently in use. Your goal should be to keep your total credit in use to less than a third of your total credit limits. Understanding this information is critical to your ability to not only manage your credit, but to also shop for the best deals on credit cards, depending on your financial situation and goals. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. for Money Matters, a product of American Urban Radio Networks. Money Matters is made possible by the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization dedicated to uncompromising commitment to communities. Service, leadership, empowerment. www.jonesboroalumni.dst.org. Money Matters is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook, Gears underscore Inc. on Instagram, and the Gears Foundation 
Nation at gmail.com. Money Matters is brought to you by Bancorp South, offering checking, savings, loans, credit cards, and wealth management. Five locations in Jonesboro to serve you. www.bancorpsouth.com or 870-972-9800. Meineke of Jonesboro is now Starks Auto Service, a full-service auto repair and vehicle maintenance center.